Hi guys, in this video we're going to see different performance measures that we may be interested in and different objectives that we may have in, in the scheduling problem. The most common objective that we have in the scheduling problem is to minimize the completion time of the last job, of, of all the jobs. So this is called CMAX because it's it's the maximum completion time and it's commonly referred to as the make span as well and it's basically how long it takes us to process all the jobs another common objective that we have in scheduling problems it to, is to minimize the maximum flow time of the jobs remember the flow time of a job is how long this job stays at the workshop and in static problems where all jobs are available at time zero um, the flow time and the completion time are equivalent that they are the same but in general in in dynamic problems they may not be so we may be interested in in minimizing the maximum flow time of the jobs the the maximum time that a certain job is at the workshop. We would also may be interested in minimizing the average flow time of the jobs and this is a, a different objective as we're gonna see clearly with with this example. Assume we've got four different jobs that we want to complete and each of them has to go just through one machine so this is a permutation flow shop that there is just one machine the only thing we have to decide is in which order we're going to process these four jobs and we're going to compute the c max the maximum completion time the f max and the f met for different um, orders we're going to assume that this is a static problem so all jobs are ready to be executed um, from time zero and these are the processing times right so job one has to be in machine one for two units of time job two at that machine for four units of time, job three, three units of time, and jo job four, just one time unit in, in the machine. So if we order the jobs um, like this, so first number one, then two, then three, and then four, the completion time will be 10. And actually, I mean, for any order we we take the completion time will be the same because there's just one machine and f max will also be 10 because it's a static problem so c max and f max will be 10 for any any order we may choose but f met will be different because if you if you look at this ordering the first one and um, job one will leave the workshop or will be completed at time two job two at time six job three at time nine and job four at time ten so f met will be the average of those values and if we sort them um, according to this order down here which is four one three two and you look at the the time at which each job will be finished um, then we would get uh, an f met of, of five so if we were interested in minimizing the average um, flow time f met this second order this second sorting would be better than the first one and if, if you think about it if, if you want to minimize the average flow time one priority rule that guarantees to achieve that minimum is the shortest processing time priority rule which basically consists in processing the jobs with the shortest processing times first okay there are other objectives that are related to to the due time of the job so far the, the ones we've seen we didn't have to look at the due date but these objectives relate to the due date and the most common one is to minimize the maximum tardiness so to minimize the tardiness 
the tardiness of the tardiest job. Um, if you assume in the previous example that the due date for all jobs is seven, then then the tardiness of the tardiest job will be three, right? Because we needed three time units to finish all the jobs. So there is one of them, the tardiest of all, that um, will will have a tardiness of, of, of three, of 10 minus seven. And and we we may be interested in, in minimizing this this objective, the maximum tardiness. Another objective we may be interested in minimizing is the maximum earliness. So the earliness of the earliest job, if we don't want to be too early for whatever reason. We may also want to try to deliver or finish our jobs as close as their due dates as possible. And in that case, we would like to minimize the maximum absolute lateness and maybe we want to minimize the average tardiness tardiness which would be different from minimizing the maximum tardiness there are two approaches here they are different but some people use one other people use another in computing the average you may want to consider all the jobs or you may only want to consider the jobs that are tardy and this is different because the jobs that are not tardy have a tardiness of, of zero. So it, it could potentially give us different solutions. We may also want to minimize the mean earliness or the mean absolute lateness or also very common to minimize the number of jobs that I have delivered past the due date. That's the same as saying the number of tardy jobs. And one thing you also have to think about is that um, very often not all the jobs are equally important to you. The, some of the jobs may have more economic value for whatever reason. They, maybe you are penalized more if you deliver certain jobs past the due date than other jobs and so on. So when you deal with these cases where not all the jobs are equally important to you, um, what you can do is to redefine all these performance measures we've seen, giving weights, different weights to different jobs in such a way that the, you will give a higher weight to the, more, the most important jobs. So then you redefine these performance measures and um, multiplying them by by the weights that you choose and then what you would do is to minimize or maximize the the weighted sum of whatever performance measure you're interested in sometimes these weights are normalized so they sum up to one the solution is is the same as if you don't normalize it but when you see the weights normalized, maybe it's easier to see the relative importance of, of each of them. And you can apply this weighting average um, procedure to pretty much all the performance measures that, that we've seen, even the ones related to the due date. Uh, an interesting measure is that you may be interested in minimizing the weighted sum of the tardiness and earliness. And, and in that case, you may want to assign different weights to, to the tardiness and to the earliness of, of the problem. So with this, we finish uh, this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching. See you later.